Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to your favorite show on the internet, Raw Law Unfiltered, with your favorite host, the DUI Guy Plus. Today, we're going to be doing something very special and something interactive. You know, on this channel, of course, we do all sorts of things. We cover topics. We discuss current events. We discuss case law. We discuss cases. Um, it's been a while since I really had the opportunity to just kind of talk to you all, you know, mano a mano. <clears throat> and uh, I think it's going to be a very interesting learning experience because now, you know, this is more like... Um, like, I want this to be more of a discussion than really me just giving a monologue, as I always do, um, or except when I have guests on, I suppose. Basically, um, as the title suggests and as the description denotes, I have five businesses. I have three law firms. They're all integrated under the umbrella of the foreman and associates uh, ring, if you will, Uh the car crash guy, the DUI guy, and the, the Kentucky Law Clinic, or the Misdemeanor and Ticket Clinic. It goes by several different names. Um, then I also have the YouTube channel. That's a separate business. And on top of that, I also have a real estate company. You know, I, I own real estate holdings. I have personal properties. I have commercial properties. And eventually, I'll probably have to hire uh, a manager for those properties. So I just wanted to kind of give you guys <coughs> like a um, an idea of what it's like, you know, uh, and how with, with five businesses, how do you also have time to to uh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, actually, I was fine all day. I wasn't coughing all day, but I just had some food and now it's coming up again and I don't know what it is. Um, I should be good like in a couple days, I hope, because this is really getting aggravating. Um, and again, thank you all for your, all your suggestions for my cough. Um, yes, I did finally watch the video. I understand what where it was all coming from. I didn't realize what it was about. So that was funny. So <laughs> the expert and um, what's his name? MG Law. That was really good. But you know, running five businesses is no easy task. Um, I will say this, it's um, it's very time consuming. I mean, you want to be able to hire people to do things for you because that's the only way you can survive. And of course, starting out, I didn't have five businesses. Starting out, I just had one. It was just the DUI guy. And then one day, <clears throat> I created the, the misdemeanor clinic. They have one in Florida. Now they have one in Kentucky, thanks to me. Um, and so how does one actually go about starting a business? You know, you can file for an LLC, get yourself your, your taxes in order and everything, file, incorporate, and so on. Get your bylaws if, if you're into that stuff, if you're going to have shareholders and all that. But at the end of the day, <coughs> you have to do the work or you have to hire somebody to do a lot of the work for you. But you still have to do the work. So like, I'll tell you how my day starts these days, okay? These days, I wake up very early, not intentionally. My body just wakes me up at like 7 a.m., 7.30 a.m., that's early. Don't worry. I, I'm not one of those 5 a.m., 6 a.m. early birds, although those are the real successful CEOs, at least in the beginning. Um, and so in order to be able to have a successful day, you have to go to bed early and you have to be up early. So my days start usually at 7 or 7.30 in the morning. Uh, I will usually skip breakfast, which is not good. It's not healthy. I know you, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And my girlfriend, by the time she wakes up, hopefully like 8, 8.30, she'll make me some oatmeal. I, I have a very acidic stomach, I've learned. And so I like things that are base. I try to avoid sugars whenever I can, especially for breakfast. But sometimes it's you crave it. You want it. Uh, and I will eat it. But uh, you want to 
you want to put something in your stomach that's going to help you be productive. So all these people who like eat bacon and eggs for breakfast, I, I scoff at them because I don't understand it. Why would you eat, excuse me, something as heavy as meat and bacon, no less. That is like such a heavy meat that takes hours to digest. Um, first thing in the morning, you want to have something light. You want some vegetables, some fruits, some oatmeal, some porridge, some grains, um, that gets your day started, you know, keeps your sugar, natural sugars high, artificial sugars low, gets you going and gives you energy that will carry you throughout the rest of the day. Uh, <clears throat> I used to believe in coffee. I no longer do. I don't drink coffee. I, in the last six months, I've had maybe three cups of coffee total combined. That's factual, but that's because of my stomach issues. So I had to find ways to compensate for it. I drink this stuff, unsweet green tea, bold green tea. And this stuff is incredible. Uh, it's got uh, natural antioxidants. It's uh, hydrating. It's got natural caffeine in it. And it doesn't have a crash. You don't crash after these things because there's no sugar and there's no caffeine extracted from coffee beans. So it's really, really nice. Um, and of course, all your friends and compatriots are going to be like, ha ha, you know, you, you're not drinking coffee. You're a loser. Uh, you are not <coughs> having <coughs> pancakes or bacon and eggs for breakfast. Like the rest of us, ha ha, you're not part of our club. Let them, who cares? You worry about your own health. They'll worry about theirs. You know what I mean? Trust me. They will. In 20 years, they'll look at you and go, man, I wish I did what you did. But, but by then, for them, it's too late. And for you, it's not because you maintain a regimen. So that's how my day starts. And naturally, I always gravitate towards my email. I like to see if there are any emergencies. You know, you never know. Sometimes a client got arrested, maybe 1230 at night, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m. And you want to check those emergency calls. Uh, if I was not awake at those hours, which I usually am not anymore these days. And uh, I would just check and see before anybody gets into the office. I'm always the first one in the office, even if it means I'm in the home office. I'm always the first one here. Um, I'm the first one to start the day, and I'm always the last one to end the day, even if my employees don't see me. You know, ask any of my employees how many times they received an email from me at 1230 at night, 1245 at night, 1 o'clock in the morning. I Sometimes I will stay up that late uh, working. Not very common, but it depends on the day. So, um, so you check your email. I check my email. I, I go through the motions. I make sure there's no like fires to put out or anything like that. Uh, sometimes I'll even goof off. Like if I have time, I'll maybe I'll play a video game or I'll read something or I'll, I'll go on X or Twitter or Instagram or YouTube and I'll watch a couple of videos. So it's like, it all depends on the day. If I got a lot of stuff to do or I have to prepare for something, I'll be doing that. But if I'm like up and I just... Uh, it's a good way to kind of cleanse your brain and, and to give you that kind of, you know, dopamine boost that will carry you again for the rest of the day. And by the time my employees are all filing into the office, you know, I've already been up 90, 120 minutes of working or and or goofing off. And remember, do, people will tell you uh, that sometimes they'll tell you, I've heard this before. Um you know, it's, it's not proper, you know, to maybe distract yourself. It's a distraction. It's only a distraction if you allow it to be a distraction. You see, the mind is a very, very powerful thing. I've come to realize, I've come to learn. And I have discovered that your ability to be productive is inversely proportional to your stamina, to your desire to um, do these things. So if you propel yourself, if if being, a, a, if, if like, you know, playing a card game or something like solitaire gives you a natural boost, there's nothing wrong with it. I have oftentimes found my employees when they're at work distracted playing solitaire. Uh, obviously, I don't encourage it, but do you think I've <coughs> said, <coughs> excuse me, do you think I've said anything about it? No, because I knew that at that moment, that's what they needed. 
Now, if I notice that they're starting to slack and they're starting to become a little bit more uh, complacent and unproductive, well, then I will say something. But so long as the work gets done and it's maximum efficiency, distractions, I think, are very welcomed. At least I, I don't <clears throat> I don't scold them for it. And you know what? My my employees, for the most part, at least the ones that that remain uh, are uh, I believe in them. And even uh, I'll, sometimes I will, when they're sick, you know, I'll let them work from home. I won't have them come in into the office because I have faith that the work is going to get done. And trust me, your employers know when you're working and your employers know when you're not working. Trust me. Even when we don't have eyes on you for days, if we haven't seen you in three days, I know if you've been working or not. It's just a feeling. You, as an employer, you're paying these people, so you have a vested interest. And if they start slacking, you start to notice these things when they are working, when they're not working. So that's that's kind of you know what happens when you employ people. Uh, so what happens around 9, 9.30 in the morning? One of two things. One, I'm either already in court or I'm on my way to court or I may be driving to court. It may be a one, two, three, four-hour drive sometimes, depending on the day and depending on where I have court. Or I may be working from home, or I may be working from the office. Um, I do client calls. I wear many different hats as the CEO of these five companies. But the beautiful thing, you know, you think like five companies, oh my God, you have to maintain. Like, no. Most of the things are on autopilot. They're already, uh, you set things in motion and then you walk away and then they just keep spinning without you having to like check on them every single second, right? There are only certain things that you can that I continuously have to make sure are being, uh, you know, maintained. And so, like client phone calls, a client needs me. A current client has a question. Larry, I need to speak to Larry. Okay, I will find time. I will make. Uh, I'll block off some time for a client to give a call, or they want to meet with me. I'll block off some time in the office. Maybe not that particular day, but if it's scheduled for that day, I'll be in the office meeting with the client. And that goes on until about 5 p.m. When everybody else goes home, I continue working. Again, depending on the day, some days I will run errands. Some days I will, you know, just like any other human being, you, I'll find myself at 2.30 on a Tuesday getting a massage because I like to get massages every couple of weeks. I take care of my body. I make sure that I get my body gets the treatment that it deserves. Um, I try to exercise again, exercise sometimes feels very difficult to fit into your schedule, but I have a treadmill. You can't see it. It's off screen, but I'm little, literally looking at it right now here in my home office. I put that treadmill there for a reason. So that anytime I want to exercise, I can just jump on and go, or I can drive 20 minutes to the rock climbing gym where I rock climb. Exercise is very, very important for your, your mental health and your physical health. They're all connected. So proper diet, enough sleep and Physical exercise, those three things, you know, everybody talks about them all the time. And it's like, yeah, 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 I heard it. But very few people do it and seldom do it. And especially in combination. And when you do those three things, they really have an impact on your life. And don't don't try to dump everything on yourself at once. Take it baby steps, one step at a time. Okay, today I'm going to fix one thing. I've been eating unhealthy, let's say, right? Let's say you're sitting there and you're going, wow, that is, seems like a lot of work. Don't do it all at once. Make a list. Okay, I need to fix my diet. I need to fix my regimen. I need to fix my sleep patterns. I've been going to bed at 4 o'clock in the morning every night. I'm being unproductive. You know, uh, I've been drinking on a Tuesday. That's not good. So start eliminating things from your life that are not conducive and adding things that are going to help you be more productive. Excuse me. So that is going to help you kind of get into the mindset of a, of a winner, a mindset of a productive individual. And before you know it, you're going to look back six months ago at what you were doing and how you were doing things and how you're doing them today. And it's going to be a night and day complete uh, transformation. Some of you who are longtime followers of this channel know that um, I don't believe in New Year's resolutions. I have resolutions every week of the year. I, I have resolutions that I made two days ago. I had some new resolutions that I made a couple days ago. 
Uh, I'm going to have new resolutions next week. I had resolutions at the end of February. I don't see the problem with New Year's resolutions is that it's like you're conditioned to just do them and make them once a year in December. And then how long do those last? A week, if you're lucky. A day, if you're unlucky. See, Ghost Rider, who has been a longtime follower of this channel. Welcome back, brother. I want to say, what, five months, six months? You've been around since the beginning. Like five months. I mean, five years or six years, like 2018. My list. Get up, read emails, watch YouTube, take a nap, get up, check if I can do some more. Oh, naps. Naps are also very, very important. Sometimes you feel yourself maybe you might be crashing. You might be crashing and you're like, I, I just need to like, don't fight it. Sometimes, you know, don't don't take a nap like every single day. That might be overkill. But I, I'll, sometimes I'll find myself burnt out and I will go, you know what? I need to go take a nap. And I'll take a nap and you, you'll do a power nap for 30 minutes. Sometimes you nap for four hours and then you stay up all night. But hopefully those days are few and far in between. And you they happen once a month, once every couple of months. Don't beat yourself up. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. They, they're literally, General T is right. They're designed, the New Year's resolutions are designed to make you fail. They're designed to make, because people are not interested in other people's success. My girlfriend said something the other day that really blew the top of my head off. She said, <clears throat> Women who give other women relationship advice will intentionally sabotage these other women's relationships because they are interested in seeing these other women fail so that there is more for them. I'm going to repeat that because this is how important it is. Women will oftentimes say like, you go girl or Yas queen to women who are like, look at this crazy bitch. Look at what she's doing. And they'll be like, oh my God, you go girl because they want to intentionally sabotage that woman's prospect or, or whatever because it makes them look better compared to this person. I mean, I mean, I always suspected, but when a girl tells you that and someone who's really close to you and, and you start seeing it more and more on the internet, you're like, holy shit. That is terrifying because, you know, I have made it a mission to surround myself with few, fewer people Fewer people, but quality people. Again, you know, uh, there's a phrase that I like to use. Tell me who your five closest friends are, and I will tell you who you are. The five people you spend the most time with is a reflection of your own character, of who you are. Now, if that phrase scares you, maybe it's time to look inward. Maybe it's time to change your friend base. Who you surround yourself with is who you end up becoming. Because they're your immediate influences, whether you like it or not. They're influencing you on a subconscious and conscious level. So um, spending time with friends and spending time with your loved ones and, and having pets are all very good things to keep a work-life balance. You know, everybody always talks about work-life balance. And there's a very, very common joke in the business industry. It's almost like it's almost like a, a proud moment, like work-life balance. What's that? All I do is work. And to me, that's stupid because I try to have a work-life balance. What is a work-life balance? You know, I don't have any children. Chandler and I don't have kids yet. And so when we are done with the day, which sometimes for me might be 5 p.m., might be 6 or 7 or 8. You know, we we just took a little break. We, we finished the movie. After this, we're probably going to cuddle on the couch, maybe watch another movie or something. Um... Neither of us really drinks alcohol, so we don't have like a bottle of wine or whatever. Um, I feel like it's important to have that time. You know, we'll, we'll snuggle with the kitty or whatever, watch a movie. To me, that's enough to just kind of like you've been up, 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 up all day. And now you just kind of bring yourself down. You might start finding yourself like having trouble staying awake and, you know, you're, you're in that moment. Or I might be like, look, babe, I'm sorry. I have, I have a lot of work to do. I need to go, you know, take care of business. I'm sorry. I need to run to the, 
um, the computer and I, you won't see me for the next three hours. And she'll be like, okay, well, I'll do something else. I'll watch, you know, Breaking Bad or whatever, some show um, by myself and snuggle with the cat while I'll be in this room working. So that is, that is my day, you know, and we'll go to bed sometimes very rarely at like 10 PM. That's a little early for me. I think I would wake up at like five o'clock in the morning if I went to bed so early, usually six or seven hours of sleep is good for me is enough for me, unless it's been a really exhausting day. Um, and everybody's different. Some people need five hours of sleep. Some people need nine. There is no golden rule. Now, one thing I did learn, and you actually might learn something. This is interesting. Uh, our sleep cycles are 90-minute cycles. I learned this from an, a medical doctor friend of mine. So if you take a nap, try to take a 90-minute nap. 90 minutes, you go through a full cycle, and you wake up refreshed. You ever wake up from a nap, and you're just like, oh, my God, why do I feel like I haven't slept at all, and I just want to keep sleeping? That's because you interrupted your sleep cycle. You were in the middle of your REM sleep, your, for example, your rapid eye movement or something. And the 90 minutes, 90 minutes, 90 minutes. So 90 minutes, three hours, four and a half hours, six hours, or seven and a half hours are the absolute perfect, or nine, I guess, if you really, really need it. And sometimes you do. Or hell, even 10 and a half on a Sunday. 10 and a half hours, that would be like the perfect 90, 90, 90, 90, 90. 90. Right. And so, again, I've tested this theory out many, many times now. It does check out. Um, and I've not I've never I've not disproved it yet. I will say that. Real quick, I just want to say welcome, Mari, Mary, Mari to the channel. Thank you for joining. Welcome, Adair. Excuse me. And welcome, Neo Blue. And also, Rachel says, just logged on while I'm sat working on our Charity UK website. A dream to have funding to hand this over to someone else. I'm listening carefully. Oh, Rachel, you, I'm glad. I'm glad. I hope that you're learning something. So um, very important in running a business, don't be afraid to make mistakes. People ask me this all the time. Like, Larry, you seem like you're not afraid of making mistakes. Nope. If I could tell you how many times I've made a mistake, it will make your head spin. But I'm like, I, I subscribe to the Warren Buffett way of thinking. My mistakes when I, when I made errors are small, but when I was right, I was right big. All right, that's how Warren made his fortunes. When he bet on companies that failed and he lost money was small bets, but on the companies that he bet that made him money were large bets. So he lost small when he lost, but when he gained, he gained big. So if you can do that, and I, I do that as much as I can, when I make a mistake, it may, you know, make you feel bad, make you feel uncomfortable, make you feel sad, but you recover, go to work the next day, and life continues. How many times have we heard a story in the news and you go, oh my God, that person's life is over. And then the next day it's like, person who? Oh, I, I forgot all about him. Who cares? I just shocked some of you, didn't I? Because it's true. Life goes on. People have, in the moment, it seems like that's it. The world is over. The world is ending. Their life is ending. The career is ending. And then before you know it, they're recovering. It has barely been 24 hours. So it is okay to make mistakes so long as you're thinking about what you're doing. If you think that this is going to be helpful, productive, whatever decision you're making for you and for your business, if you think that you are making the right decision, then make it. You may be surprised with the results. You may be happily surprised with the results. If it turns out that you were wrong and it was not the correct path, okay, then correct it. Find a way to capitalize on your mistakes. Find a way to make them into assets, judo your own mistakes. You know, the, the concept of judo is when your opponent is bringing force towards you. What do you do? You use that force, you flip it, and you use it against them. And before you know it, they hit themselves in the face or they fall to the ground using their own momentum. You know what I mean? So in that sense, 
using judo on your own mistakes is beautiful. Like for instance, how what we did with what the hails. When I got that, uh, uh, not voicemail, but everybody calls it a voicemail because it's, you know, uh, very rarely do people have answering services. It's not a very common thing. I just have one because I run a business where I have volumes and volumes and volumes and volumes of calls coming in. It is impossible for me to sit there and answer the phone. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to get anything else done. So I pay a service to answer the phone for me. And the individual on the other end said, you know, I'm filing a bar complaint against Mr. Foreman. So tell him to buckle up. What did we do? We took that buckle up and we judo lawed. We judo that phrase to the ground. And now hashtag buckle up is literally in my title. My new brand or part of my new brand. Use your opponent's force against them whenever you can. You are going to be far more successful. See, people sometimes get so caught up in the little tiny nitty gritty things and they start. I could go on and on. I could name some of them. I just don't want to because it's going to call some people out. I've watched it happen and I've been part of it myself. I'm guilty of the same. It's just I learn how to disconnect and re redirect course and change course and keep going in this direction because forces will pull you and they <coughs> – I will I'll give you a prime example from your own personal life. How many times have you been invited to a party or a gathering or somewhere where you don't want to be? You don't want to go, but you're like, all right, I'll go anyway, and you go, and you spend six hours there, and you're miserable, and you're like – why did I come here? Learn to say no. Learn to say no. And to the hardest people in your life, your friends. Learn to say no to your friends sometimes. Saying no to your friends is one of the hardest things that a person can do. Now, there's some things you don't say no to. You're invited to your best friend's wedding and he asks you to be the best man. I mean, of course, you know, or or the bridesmaid, the the the, the, the honorary bridesmaid, whatever it's called. Um, you know, that you you can't unless you really truly have something so important that you are unable to acquiesce to that request. But seldom is that going to happen to such an extreme degree. Usually it's like, hey, we're, we're hanging out. You know, it's board game night. Come on. You got to come to board game night. It's Tuesday. What? Where are you? Well, you have some work to do and you're, you're going to sacrifice your work in exchange for some fun with your friends. Are you even going to have a good time? Probably not. Why not? Because your mind is not going to be there. Your mind is going to be at home going, oh, man, my boss is going to be so mad if I don't turn this in. This game, what time is it? Oh, it's 8.30. Okay. Uh, this should go on for another hour and a half. Maybe maybe I can get home and finish it. I'll be up until 1 o'clock in the morning. God, I'm going to get six hours of sleep. That's what you're thinking about. You can't enjoy in the moment because you're sacrificing your own needs for someone else's. And that's not a very healthy um, relationship with yourself and with your friends, you know, because your friends will appreciate you saying, look, I can't come tonight, but I promise I'll make it up to you next time. I'll bring pizza or I'll bring the Cokes or I'll bring, you know, whatever, or I will be, I'll host it at my place next time. So you don't have to prepare everything and clean the house up. Find ways to sacrifice. You ever hear somebody say, this is another very important one, um, like with respect to exercise. Oh, I just, I can't find the time. I would love to exercise. I just can't seem to be able to find the time. That's wrong. The time is always there. The time always was and always will be there. What they don't have is the desire. Sorry to break it to you. If you keep saying the phrase, I don't have the time over and over again, it means you don't have the desire. And that's okay. I'm just calling you out. That's all I'm doing. I'm not insulting you. I'm not scolding you. I'm not telling you to be a better person. I'm simply calling out a fact. When a person says, I would love to exercise or I would love to do this or I'd love to, 
It's, that means it's not a priority. It's at the bottom of the list of their priorities. They have the time. They just choose to allocate that time to something else. You see? You see the difference? Because the time is always there. We all have time. We all have time to accomplish everything that we want. Sometimes you have to make sacrifices. Sometimes you will sacrifice work to go with your friends because you haven't seen them in three weeks. And you'll say, you know what? Fuck my boss. He's going to have to deal with it. I'll deal with this shit tomorrow. I've been working my ass off. He will not leave me alone. I'm going to sacrifice my work to hang out with my friends tonight. And you're going to have a grand old time. Why? Because you're giving your boss the finger. And the next morning when you come into work and your boss says, where is your work? You say, look, man, I've been slaving away. If you're going to fire me, go ahead and fire me. But I, I needed a break. If your boss is a good person, they will let it slide. And hopefully maybe they'll be like, why didn't you come to me sooner? I would have given you some slack. I thought you were enjoying it. You'd be surprised. People are so afraid of the truth. They're so afraid. They're hanging on to dead-end jobs that they don't want, they don't like. They're, they're just making money from a dead end. Don't be afraid to challenge your superiors. Maybe that's a, that's a risk you're not willing to take, and maybe you shouldn't. Maybe you should, depending on your position, if you have seniority, if you have um, any type of pull. If you're in, in good hands with your supervisors, for example, um, it's just, it's so scary when, you know, I've never worked outside the family in my whole life. So I have no frame of reference. I worked, I've made like 60 bucks outside the family before I became a lawyer. That's a true statement. I was 25 years old. I worked for my family the enti my entire life. They paid me in the form of food, shelter, and a roof over my head. Those, that, those were my dollar bills and the occasional gas money so I can traverse from point A to point B or travel for my uh, soft sit friends. So I was very lucky. I consider myself very lucky to have a family that really took care of me and took me in. And they weren't like, you're 18, you know, get the fuck out. You're on your own. You're an adult now. Uh, I was 32. Think about that. I was 32 years old when I left the house. I paid for a third of that condo. I owned one third of that condo where I lived. Uh, split three ways, mom, dad, me. I already had my Maserati. I didn't have my Lambo yet, but I was close. Uh, I didn't have my building yet, but I was close. It's not like I couldn't move out. I could have bought an entire house, probably cash. I wasn't going to. That's a stupid financial decision. But that's not the point. I didn't move out because I didn't have the money. I didn't move out because I was comfortable. Call it Stockholm Syndrome. Call it something else. Um, I got comfortable. I got complacent, but my parents eventually drove me insane and I moved out June 6, 2020. I'll never forget it during the pandemic because I was trapped. I was trapped in a house where I couldn't leave. Up until that point, I would leave at like 7 a.m., 8 a.m. I would come back at 11. I would never see them. I was literally, it was like a crash pad. My home was a crash pad. You know, at that age, you're, um, believe it or not, I even had a curfew. It, just saying it out loud, it make, makes it makes me go like, my God, what kind of life did I lead at 32 years old? This is 2020. I was born in 1988. At 32 years old, I voluntarily submitted myself to a curfew. Why? Because it didn't bother me. I wasn't I wasn't one of those kids who liked to stay up until one or two o'clock in the morning. I had a girlfriend. Um, we would spend time together. I didn't sometimes I would spend the night and my parents didn't have a problem with that. But I did have a curfew. If I wasn't spending the night with her, I would have to be home by 11. And I, my mom would, if it was 11.01 and I'm not home, I'm going to, I'm going to get that phone call. I'm going to get that phone call. Where are you? Why are you not home? How long until you're going to be home? And then when I arrive, why didn't you get home in time? You know, Jewish moms, it is what it is. Do I regret it? Not one bit, but everybody has their own life. So travel, traverse your own path. That's another thing I'm going to say. Don't look at others going, um, I wish I was more like them because they have it figured out. And da, da, da. it's okay to have, you know, people you look up to. I have people I look up to, but it is not okay to be like, well, look at how much they've accomplished and I need to be on par with them. You know why? Because you are leading different lives. 
don't compare like that because then you get jealous and you're like, man, all I need is just a little bit more. It's okay to have healthy competition, but don't overdo it. Don't overdo it. You're not going to do yourself or anybody else any favors. You're going to suffer. You're going to be miserable. You're going to be depressed and you're not going to accomplish anything. But have healthy goals, have healthy competition. I secretly, nobody knows these except my girlfriend now. It's just two people now on this planet that know some of my goals. Even she doesn't know all of them. She knows some of them. But there are certain goals that I have, and I'm not going to tell you what they are, but I have goals. I have YouTube goals. I have personal goals. You know some of them already, you know, the that I want to make $20 billion. I have a deadline now. I, I want to be worth $20 billion by the time I'm 40. So I have four years, two months. No, four years, one month, and seven days to go. Four years, one month. Sorry. Yes. Four years, one month, seven days. It's an audacious, insane goal. That's who I am. So remember to be true to yourself. Your goal may be, I want to make $6 million by the time I'm 50. Oh my God, but Foreman is at 20 billion until he's 40. Who cares? You're on a different path. You may not have the same ideas or goals or desires that I have. I'm an insane, narcissistic psychopath. I freely admit that. And I love who I am. I learn my weaknesses and I curtail them. I know my strengths and I elevate them. Knowing thyself is half the battle, as Sun Tzu said. Never be afraid to admit who you are. Never be afraid of your mistakes. Never be afraid of where you're going and what you're doing. Even if it's going to make some people upset. Because sometimes your loved ones, to protect you, will even say things like, oh, come on, Larry. Really? Tw 20 what? Million. You didn't, you didn't mean, no, with a B. Okay, have a seat, Larry. Let's have a talk. Let's be realistic. And they'll go into this out of love because I love you and I want to protect you and you're you're insane. You're you're a fucking maniac. Like come on, this is not realistic. But it's my goal. You you're not going to be able to like dissuade me from and change my goals. You know I'm going to go, "You know what? You have actually changed my mind. I'm going to go on a different path because you what? No. Why should you? Be be very take them, you know, um Opinions are like a-holes, you know, everybody's got one. Or there's another phrase, I don't know if it's Russian or English. I don't think there's one in English. I know it's in Russian. We give out, um, what is it? We give out advice by the bucket full, but we accept it by we accept advice by the thimble, right? We give advice by the like buckets filled with water. We give advice by the buckets, but we accept them by the thimble. Tony Robbins says hi, <laughs> right? Exactly. Oh, sorry, I have some chicken in my teeth. Excuse me. Um, um so anyway, uh let's let's read some more super chats. Um, Larry, you are the best. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic, Debbie. Thank you for asking. How are you doing? Are you doing, huh? Are you doing? And then Debbie, again, you love yourself first for yourself or lose. Exactly. And Charlene, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, Charlene Martinak, thank you for joining on as a member. And by the way, don't forget to like this video, comment below, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so you always get notified when we go live like this. And uh, tomorrow, by the way, Remy Legal, my girlfriend and I are going to be doing a special video talking about our first UFC fight. You guys don't want to miss that. Uh, so tomorrow at 8. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Uh, also, join on as a member. Membership starts at like 99 cents. Literally just got here, says Matrix. Haven't listened for more than eight minutes. I just want to say that I was sad you were selling your practice. That's only one of you. There's only one of you. I'm still going to be practicing attorney. You know, I'm not selling my bar license. Yet, I know you'll do right like always. Oh, of course. Absolutely. 
Um, I'm not selling my, my license to practice law. You know, I'm still going to be an attorney. To the contrary, I feel like I'm going to be able to, um, I'm going to be able to give more to the community, to the world, to the country, if then then staying here in Kentucky and focusing on on defending people who are accused of operating a motor vehicle under the influence and the like in criminal law, because I'm 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 actually hindered by my practice. I'm physically married to this location because I have to be in court and so on. And it's very, um, it's very um, limiting. There's no need for that. I want to be more mobile. Like for instance, uh, my girlfriend and I are going to be in uh, uh, Norfolk County in two weeks, three weeks, two weeks, two and a half weeks. April 15th, April 15th, we want to go to Massachusetts for the Karen Reed trial. Um, people are saying that, by the way, April 4th is when the, the hearing is going to be, but I don't want to digress too much from this. Um, am I going to watch for public safety's last video? Uh, no, but thank you. Am I leaving Kentucky? Not for a while. No, I'm going to stay in Kentucky for the time being. Uh, I think that uh, Kentucky still has a lot to offer. But again, my plan. Okay, so now that you're asking me about my own personal plans. My own personal plans are to continue expanding my practice into First Amendment litigation and the like constitutional stuff. And... I want to continue growing my YouTube channel, which, by the way, we just hit right now, this live, we hit 399,000 subscribers. We are 981, as of this second, away from 400K. Woohoo! Uh, very exciting. We're going to hit the big 4000000 probably tomorrow or Saturday. I thought it was going to be Monday, but I got like a, a big jump. Uh, when I talked about Karen Reed stuff. And another thing, by the way, I do want to mention this because this is very interesting. Um, I had people from Massachusetts, from Norfolk County, reach out to me. And I'm, I'm actually helping some of them directly. Uh, I want to draft, I want to help them draft a letter to the judge and state why the prosecution's motion should be granted in part and overruled in part, denied in part. Dan Davis says, I think I pissed off a county inspector today. I said to him, those that can't do teach, those that can't teach become <laughs> I mean, that's just mean, but I think it's funny. Uh, I think that's funny. So I really, really hope that um, everybody gets what they want in life. That's always my goal. My goal is to see people succeed because I'm not of the belief that we are on a limited pool of resources. Uh, I believe the human potential is infinite. It's only us and the people above us who want to limit us and limit our potential. They're not interested in us thinking that there's plenty to go around. They want us to think that it's scarce and we have to fight and kill each other over it because at the end of the day, they win. And those of you who don't believe in like the conspiracy theories or the Illuminati or the George Soros or whatever, because I'm one of them, I don't believe in any of that shit. But of course, I know that there are the uber wealthy that own billions and trillions, trillions of dollars that they control and they manage in a way, in one way or another, and will never want for anything again for the next 5,000 generations in their families. Uh, they're not interested in seeing you succeed and seeing you happy. You're the common folk. You are the working class. I'm still the working class, no matter how I look at it, no matter how I try to think of myself as, as special, I'm not. I'm just a snowflake. You know, not in that sense, but you know what I mean. I am just a, a dot, a speck in an infinite cosmos. I am insignificant. I am irrelevant. I have purpose, but in when compared to the infinity of the entirety of the universe, 
calling myself a dot is actually audacious because like how dare you call yourself a dot you are less than that you're less than a speck you're less than a, a grain of sand on top you know inside of a grain of sand like take a grain of sand shave it off and then take that and shave another piece off and then take that and shave it off and that's you it's a very hard realization you know to uh, especially for for someone who like me who does have narcissistic tendencies to have their ego completely crushed by god himself if you've never met god whew, i don't recommend it uh he'll he'll tell you one thing or two trust me and um it's very important to humble yourself to remember your roots to remember where you came from you know people who have grown up in families that have had everything given to them uh, I, I pity those people because they never had to work in their life to get what they have. And they're able to eat and feed their families uh, and pay rent and make their car payments. And that money is just there. It's just call them trust fund babies or whatever. They're the worst kind on this planet unless their children, uh, excuse me, unless their parents are able to instill in their children, those same trust fund babies, the importance of, and the value of money. Because unless you had to actually work hard for your money, you will never be able to appreciate it. It's those who work and live paycheck to paycheck are the ones who appreciate money the most because they understand the value of it, how scarce it may be, and how difficult it is to come by it. And so yeah, even when I'm going to be a multi, 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 multi millionaire, billionaire, whatever, I will never forget where I came from. That is that is not a promise. It's just who I am as a person. Uh, I am a philanthropist, and I'm going to be an even bigger future philanthropist once I'm able to give more than I get. Um, because right now, you understand, coming back to the whole business thing, full circle, another very important concept that I almost forgot to mention, don't forget to feed your business. What do I mean by that? Don't forget to feed your business because if you don't feed your business, you are going to starve yourself. Listen to that again. If you're not going to feed your business, you yourself are going to starve. What do I mean? So there's a lot of people. There's a lot of people who said, look, I am making a, like let's let's narrow it down to a dollar an hour. We'll make it simple. You make a dollar an hour. I know it's oversimplified, but it's, it's intentionally simplified. You make a dollar an hour, okay, in your business. What do most people do? They spend 30 cents if the business is lucky, maybe sometimes 20, sometimes 10 cents of that dollar on the business, and they keep 90 cents for themselves. They're starving that business. Now, the problem with doing that is your business, you're not giving your business a chance to grow. You have to feed your business. I made it a rule. You know, most people say like 60, 40. Spend 60 on the business, 60 cents of every dollar you make on the business, 40 cents on yourself. There were months when I spent 10 cents on myself and 90 cents on the business, 20, 30. I never went above 30 on myself, 30 cents. And that is why people ask, like, wow, Larry, you, it seems like you got successful really fast. Well, that's because I was not being greedy. Greed will absolutely destroy your business. Greed will make you regret you started the business in the first place. You'd be like, why is my business failing? I put so many hours into it. Well, how much money did you put into it? 20 cents on the dollar, 30 cents on the dollar. You should be putting at least 70, if not 75 cents of every dollar you make back into the business that is a surefire way if the business is successful and has promise in order for it to grow and flourish and rise. Um, <clears throat> oh, we read this one. RJ Medic, welcome back. Uh, we give advice by the bucket, but take it by the grain. Tom Stoppard. Okay, there we go. Thank you so much. I, I knew it was from somewhere. Matrix again says, ah, I knew you weren't selling your license. So grateful you'll still be sharing your gift. You mean my grift? What, what gift? I'm sharing my grift. I'm a grifter. Everybody, is, you're not allowed to make money on the internet anymore. You're If you do, you're a grifter, right? I own that title. I'm just joking, of course, but thank you. Don't ever become a network mouthpiece. I don't think I'm capable 
I would get fired the first day because I'll be like live on the air and I'll be like, today we are going to be talking. Really? You want me to talk about this shit? Oh, fine. And they'll be like, Larry, you're fired. Get, get off the stage. We want every genuine and unedited part of you. <laughs> Fair enough. Would you uh, do a Karen Reed notepad like in depth? Probably. There's no reason not to. Um, unless they allow computers. Before I forget, happy early Easter. Thank you, Dan Davis. Happy Easter. Debbie, oh, you had to you had to throw a nuclear bomb in here, didn't you? What is success to you? I'll tell you what success is to me. Success is shaking hands with a client who is smiling. after you got their case resolved in the way that they wanted, whatever that result may be. That's success. When you are shaking hands with a client for the last time and they got a big smile on their face and they're happy and you're parting ways. That's to me the epitome of success. Because when you do it one time, it's just one time. When you do it 10 times, well, you're building a successful business. When you do it a hundred times, you know, you're on your way to a successful business. When you do it a thousand times, you are running a successful business. When you do it 10,000 times, and that one I probably have not reached yet because we've only had 2,000 clients. Uh, it's probably 2,100 now, but we're growing. Um, when you shake hands with a smiling, you know, happy, ecstatic client 10,000 times, you have a legacy. That is no longer a building or a you have. That is a um, successful business. You have built a successful legacy. That's when you know you've made it. That's when you know you've made it. Okay, I'm glad you like my answer. That's my answer. Um, if you focus, I always made this phrase a uh, the epitome of my business. If you focus on the money, you shall have none. If you focus on the client, you shall flourish. Write that down. Frame it. I don't know if anybody coined it. It's my phrase. Um, I don't know if anybody else has ever come up with it. It doesn't seem... Um, it doesn't seem like uh, it should be that crazy to, to create on your own. I may have stolen it from somewhere. I'm not taking all the credit. I'm not trying to. But it is definitely a phrase that has carried me very far. If you're trying to chase that $500 and you're willing to sacrifice everything for it, trust me that 500 bucks ain't worth it. But if you're accepting 500 bucks from a client and it's your this is your rent money, this is your ramen money, but you're going to do everything you can for that client, believe you me, that $500 is going to multiply and have babies before you know it. And that $500 will turn into $50,000 over time, of course. Because People talk about investing in companies. Investing in companies is a gamble. It's a risk unless you know what you're doing. And seldom people know what they're doing truly in the stock market. The best investment you can make is in yourself. You are the best investment you can make. Investing in your education, which is a joke, by the way, but it's a necessary evil. Um, you can't just self-educate because nobody will accept you these days into a job. Um, but, but uh, at the end of the day, everybody's on their own path. Everybody's on their own path. And um, like I said, if you focus on the money, you shall have none. If you focus on the client, you shall flourish. Because your business is your worst client. Like somebody earlier today on Twitter thought that they were really really sticking it to me. They they called out a lawsuit against me from 2021 
or something I said in 2020 during the pandemic, cops sued me. I talked about this countless times on my channel. This is not a secret. Yes, I got sued by a cop. Yes, I beat him. Yes, he went to prison on an unrelated charge. None of it matters. He's out now. Hopefully he's doing better. I wish nothing but success to him. I didn't call him out because I wanted him to be destroyed. I called him out because he was a dick at the time. And I hope that he learned from it. Um, and I think he did. And I'm glad for it. I wish nothing but prosperity for the man. I wish no ill will towards him. But they tried to kind of use it against me. And I'm like, oh my God, here we go. I have to deal with this. And they were highlighting some of my negative reviews, which, listen, if you represented, let's say, like we have just over 2,000 satisfied clients. I also have about five. I don't know, you never forget your disgruntled, like you're truly disgruntled. I'm not talking about the, I'm a little disgruntled, but fuck you and I'm I'm out, but I'm happy secretly. I'm talking about the truly disgruntled. I, you will never make them happy as long as you live clients. I have about five of them. And I did the math. I was curious because they're calling out, they're highlighting them because their reviews are all public. That's they're voicing their opinion. They have a right to voice their opinion. I am not going to try and shut them up. I'm glad that they did because they make me want to become a better person too. Like, don't hire people like that anymore, Larry, because they are going to be asshole clients and leave one-star reviews. Uh, you learn to watch out for those people. You learn to, to read people better. They teach me how to read people better uh, before I take their money. And so, you know, 99.75% satisfaction rate at my firm, I realized. And they're highlighting the 0.25%. And I was like, good for you. Like if that's all you have to do with your day, good for you. You are giving me free publicity. Good for you. Thank you. Please continue. You're talking. I'm telling you, your haters will give you a lot more love than your biggest fans. Sometimes, not always. I still love my biggest flan, my biggest uh, fans, <laughs> biggest flans. Um, all right, I want to keep this under an hour, so I'm I'm gonna wrap this up. You can't please everyone, or you are not real. Exactly, Debbie. Exactly. Love many, trust a few, and learn to paddle your own canoe. <laughs> DUI guy, mobile law. Um, all right. I love you guys. You are the best. Thank you all for joining me with joining me here tonight. Uh, this has kind of evolved into more than just talking about business. This has also been kind of like a, um, sharing some more life stories and things about life. And hopefully if you don't take anything else from this video, I hope you walk away from this. You are far more capable than you give yourself credit for. Trust me when I say this. Because the infinite, the, excuse me, the human uh, potential, the human mind has infinite potential. The human body has infinite potential. We are only limited by our strongest limiting belief. Those are the hardest to overcome. And so I hope that you overcome them. I hope that you succeed. I want to see you succeed. I want to hear your success stories. You know, six months from now, shoot me an email and be like, hey, Larry, remember in March you, you said blah de blah de blah Well, it's been six months and here I am. My whole life has changed. If I get one of those emails from this video, just one, I'll be like, my job is done. The video has accomplished its purpose. So I thank you all for being here. I love every single one of you. And I will see you tomorrow right here, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 Pacific, with Remy Legal, where we're talking about our first UFC fight. Have a good night, everybody. Bye-bye.